Miami, Florida. The energy of South Beach can make anyone feel young for weekends. The Phillies have had their own youth movement over the last two nights at Marlins Park. First, it was Jared Eikhoff pitching the Phils to success in his major league debut. Last night, it was big swing after big swing from the young bats, setting the Phillies up for a series win, but leaving some new faces looking for a high five. a little extra time but last night the Phillies bats woke up in the eighth inning and they walked away with victory number two in this four game series today they're trying to put a stamp on the overall victory for the series game four between the Phils and the Marlins here at Marlins Park season series wise the Phillies with seven wins the big thing yes the Phillies starters have a 5.07 earned run average the bullpen's been very good but the Marlins bullpen has not been very good so like last night the Phillies have been able to pick up some wins late in games against the fish. Hi everybody, I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Matt Stairs. Well, since the All-Star break, the Phillies have the best record in the National League East. They've started to turn things around again after hitting a little bit of a speed bump last week, and it culminated with last night's victory where they leaned on the young guys. The young guys who we knew would have an impact, we just didn't know how good of an impact they would have. <laughs> Well, there was an impact last night. It's, it's nice to see these guys getting comfortable, feeling good every time they go up the batter's box. You know, that's the key. Even the pitchers have been pitching very well. But when you step in that batter's box last night right here, Darnell Sweeney, his third at bat in the big leagues, all three pinch hitting. He said, this time I'm going to be aggressive and get to cut her down in the zone for his first big league knock, his first big league home run. And I liked what he said. He said he wanted to be aggressive early because big league pitchers know how to put away hitters late in counts. So he's aggressive. Then Alan, Aaron Altair comes up in the ninth inning. Gets a fastball down and in. Swing the bat very well yesterday. No hits. A couple of very good defensive plays behind him. But he crushes that ball to left field. Then Darren Ruff comes up. Gets a cement mixer slider right down the middle of the plate hanging. Crushes it to left field. You know, back to back home runs. So it's nice to see these young guys hitting home runs and getting key hits. First time this year the Phillies have had back to back home runs. So Altair is back in the lineup today. He's batting third. Darnell Sweeney will start today. It'll be his first major league start. So we'll see what he can do with maybe four at bats against this Marlin squad. Now they're going to back the pitching of Aaron Nola. Nola came up from the minor leagues and really had a very good start for the Phillies. The last couple of starts haven't been all that great for him. Now as he stretches and gets ready for today's ball game he's thinking back to his last outing and saying to himself all right I learned a valuable lesson I'm not going to pitch that way again well and I think the valuable lesson is stop nibbling you need to go out there and trust your stuff pound the strike zone honestly I think the last game he was hitting 94 95 Josh Donaldson hit an absolute bomb well over 450 feet and he got away from being aggressive in the strike zone he has a good fastball but you need to throw the fastball out of third and let it run he was trying to hit the corner he was missing he was getting behind Last two games, five walks. And it's not like him. He's the guy that goes out and he attacks his own. So, one, if he learned anything, is stop nibbling and go after hitters. All right, we'll see if he can wrap up this series and give the Phils a victory. They've won two of the first three. He'll be opposed today by Adam Conley, who's making his fourth major league start for the Miami Marlins. Comes in with a 1 0 record and a 5.82 ERA. Well, it's been a fun series so far. From a Phillies standpoint, it's been nice to watch the energy continue to build. We'll get to the lineups at first pitch for today's ball game. Oh, yeah, by the way, it didn't take $5,000. He got the baseball. We'll be back after this. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Citizen.
wearing the orange jerseys today. It's the final game of this four game series before the Phils return home for a week of games four against the Mets and then three against the San Diego Padres. The Marlins take the field. Aaron Nola has just arrived in the dugout. He's got himself all cooled down after warming up. Let's take a look at the lineup that will support him today. Brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Phils. Hernandez leads it off at second base, then Andres Blanco and Aaron Altair. Jeff Francoeur starts again in right field. He'll back cleanup. Darren Ruff will hit fifth. Darnell Sweeney will make his major first major league start. He'll bat sixth. And the bottom third of Galvis, Ruff, and Aaron Nola. And once again, the Phillies will see a pitcher that they've never seen before. This time in left-hander Adam Conley, a former second-round pick by the Miami Marlins. 16 strikeouts in 21 and two-thirds innings, making his fourth start overall. Yeah, and uh, he's got a very simple delivery. Kind of starts from a stretch and just lifts that leg up and you know, straight ahead. And you can see the scouting report. He's a three pitch pitcher average velocity 90.5 miles an hour. League is hitting 304 versus his changeup. His fastball 347. The slider has been his best pitch so far. And the league is hitting 250 with it. And he's throwing about 16.5 pitches per inning. Well he's facing a lineup today that does not have a left hander in it. I mean from top to bottom you know the Phillies have four switch hitters in today's lineup but everybody at least to start the game will bat right handed against the lefty Adam Conley. Well before the ball game uh, on the field the Marlins honored some of their alums including Antonio Alfonseca who is second in Juan Pierre and that's Derek Lee. Boy he was a good first baseman. In fact uh, it was just last night that Goldschmidt became the first first baseman since Lee to steal 20 bags in a season. Cesar Hernandez takes low and the first pitch of the game is for ball one. There was a beautiful tribute for Juan Pierre uh, before he threw out the ceremonial first pitch and then he said thank you to the fans uh, here in South Florida. One ball no strikes to Hernandez. Cesar three for 14 in this series. Overall hitting 276 with a home run and 29 runs batted in. That one's fouled off to the right. And it's one and two. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Jerry Boyle of Freeland, Pennsylvania. Phillies hit home run in today's ball game. Then Jerry will win $100. Two and two to Hernandez. Hernandez, Blanco, and Altair. Those are the first three hitters for the Phils today. Now, I like the at bat already because he has seen six pitches, five pitches, excuse me, compared to yesterday. He swung at the first pitch. As a fly ball, shallow right field coming in is Gillespie, and he's there. And one away. Well, speaking of that approach, it's time now for our Nissan keys to the game. Well, key number one for me, Nola, attack the zone with the fastball. Stop nibbling, get out there and pound the zone. Two, A, was Hernandez, get back into your game, which we just saw, see some pitches. And the big one for me is catch the fish. Win today, you tie them, and maybe we can pull ahead tomorrow. Yeah, again, the Phillies uh, are closing in on the fish. They caught them about 10 days ago. And then the Phillies started going into a little bit of a funk again. So Pete McCannon's team is hoping to catch them again. Release them to the basement and then catch the Braves because the Braves are not playing good baseball right now. That one's back towards second base. D Gordon to his right a step. And two quick outs here in the top of the first. And Aaron Altair will come to the plate. Aaron batting third. He's four for 13 since being brought up, hitting 308 with two home runs. Well, here's the home run last night. This is what gave the Phils the lead for good. Yeah, he swung the bat very well last night. This, the only hit he got, but which was fine because it was a big one. It was in the ninth inning. Go ahead, a home run, and eventually followed up by Darren Ruff. Asked him today. We had a, a conversation about you know that particular at bat. So I got a miss one and one and I said all right was it as basic as it's three and one 
if I get it in this spot then I'm going to take a swing at it. He said yeah it was. He said now it was down farther than I would have liked but I was looking in so it made it easy for me to just drop the bat and go. I like the thought process. Yeah he said you know that's the good part about being up here in the big leagues is that that kind of approach hasn't changed for him. Right. It's the same as it was in the minor leagues. It's the same as it was at least he thought when he was even younger. Fouls it away and it's two and two. So basically he's staying with his strength. You can see he's probably looking for that's right. You know, the ball right in here while the ball comes down to towards the bottom of the zone. And it's a very easy swing just drop the barrel to the ball. Chopper toward the right side. Gordon will get to it. It took a nice hop to him on the glove side. And the Phillies go down one, two, three in their half of the first. So Phillies go down quietly. Aaron Nola will go to work when we return for the bottom of the first. Marlins to bat for the first time. Let's take a look at their lineup brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Phils. Gordon Prado and Dietrich followed by Boer, Ozuna, and Gillespie. Echeverria moves up to the seven hole. Jeff Mathis, a lifetime uh, under 200 hitter, bats eighth and batting ninth and pitching is Adam Conley. And they will face Nola three and one. ERA of 4.41. Ten walks, which he feels is high for him. It is. First pitch to D. Gordon is in there. It's 0 and 1. And you can see the scouting report. Three pitch pitcher, fastball, curve change. Fastball will hit, will hit 95 miles an hour, but lives right around 90.5 the whole game. Another strike at the knees. That's a great indication right there. In his bullpen session, he was trying to work on just that, trying to keep the ball down and in particular spots in the strike zone. Slaps it the opposite way. That'll go foul. Now there he missed his spot. Yep. That pitch he wanted inside. And just tailed back over the middle of the plate. To camera set up inside. This is out of third. Yeah. He's lucky. <laughs> D. Gordon hitting 358 in the month of August. He leads the National League in hitting. Cow remains 0 and 2. Fortunately, that hit an open area over the uh, stairwell. Breaking ball outside, 1 and 2. D. Gordon has 44 multi hit games. Last night stopped his uh, streak of six straight multi hit games. 
Center field. Sweeney on the run. Settling under it makes the catch. So his good buddy flies out to him for the first out here in the first. During the 2015 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each card of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream. Sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. One out for Martin Prado. Two for nine in the series. I would assume that uh, Darnell Sweeney feels a little better making the first catch in his big league career. <laughs> you always want to get that out of the way. Well, the other day, yesterday actually, uh, and the day before, he spent time taking ground balls at third base, at second base, and taking fly balls in center field. Well, he went after that ball like he had 100% idea what he was doing. Well, just like Odubel Herrera, he's kind of a converted infielder. A couple of really good catches. That one was with two hands down the right field line. The first one was with one handed grab in a sea of people. Back to back hitters. He's worked the count. No balls and two strikes. And that got the batter, Prado. See a curveball right here. <laughs> see, that's where you double up inside first strike. When you start thinking slider away or curveball, you bust him in again. But they won't. Curveball line toward left center field. That'll be in for a base hit. Prado's aboard. That one hung up into the middle of the plate. That'll bring Derek Dietrich to the plate. Dietrich batting third in today's game. 12 RBIs in August, an RBI in seven games. In his last seven games. I think we need to stop throwing Prado inside and up because I don't think he's very happy with it because it happened last night. Yeah. Garcia smoked the double down the left field line. But if you're going to come in there that one time, then you come back in there again for a strike. Pitchers are getting too predictable when they come up and in. Inside and low, one and oh. Yeah, he looked like he didn't bail at all. Yeah. He was well aware that that was the pitch that was going to be thrown. Trust me, you get a pitch up and in. You're gonna, all right, stay shoulder tight. Here comes an off speed. Think middle, right center. Darren Ruff cuts that one off on the big hop. They get one at seconds. And they'll. Settle for just getting the lead runner. 3 6 on the put out. Fielder's choice. It's a good play right there. Being aggressive coming in, making a strong throw to second base, and good choice by Freddie Galvis by not throwing the ball to first. I was checking on Nola for a second because when he got to first base, he rolled his ankle on the bag. Oh, did he? Yeah. Is he walking back without any problems? Yeah, he was fine. He's a wiry young fella. <laughs> Justin Bohr walked twice last night, intentionally walked one time. Fastball up and away. It's 1 0. Or 12 home runs, 12 doubles, and 39 runs batted in. So his right foot, right. It's kind of caught up a little. I guess it looked, looked a little different. It caught up in the dirt before he got to the bag. Really sure what you're looking for 2 0 as a number four hitter. Yeah, I'm surprised that he would even take something like that. Yeah, split the plate. 
Well, they're setting up outside again, playing to this ballpark. Oh, awfully close. Three and one. Pitch tailed outside. So three balls and one strike with Dietrich over at first. Have yet to see a changeup from Aaron Nola today. Runner goes, pitches a strike, throw to second base is in plenty of time. That was kind of an odd one. Two six on the put out. Side is retired. Caught stealing is Derek Dietrich. No runs, one hit, and nobody left. We'll go to the second in a scoreless game. Night at Citizens Bank Park. You can get tickets by going to Phillies.com for all four games. The pitching matchups are out. Tomorrow it's Jacob DeGrom against Adam Morgan. And again, all four games are at 7.05. Jeff Francoeur leads things off as we move to the seconds here in Miami. Francoeur hitting 365 over his last 22 games. Ground ball to shortstop. Echeverria gobbles it up. One out, Darren Ruff is coming up. Well, Murph, we uh, look at these numbers all the time. Under Pete McCann, the Phillies are 23 and 26. But in reality, since the first of July, the Phillies have been a 500 team, which is pretty good when you look at everybody else in the division. Yeah, Tom, we've talked about it after the All-Star break. It's, it really has been a different team in all facets of the game, but mostly offensively, they've really improved. They have the fourth rest, uh, best record in baseball after the All-Star break, and a lot of it has to do with their resurgence in the offense. They had a team batting average of uh, 254 right now. That's 13th in Major League Baseball. But before the All-Star break, just 246. That was 23rd in all of baseball. But since then, they've really improved. Third best in all of baseball, 276 since the All-Star break. So they've gotten better pitching. The bullpen has been better. But really, it's been the offense that has been the turnaround for this team, and hopefully they can keep it up. Hopefully they can keep it up. Pete McCannon has uh, sort of juggled this lineup where he's got certain guys playing against lefties and certain guys playing against righties. And he stopped short of calling it a platoon, but in reality, it's a platoon. It's a platoon. At more than one or two positions, too. Yeah, Matt and I were talking about that earlier today. It's it's almost every position, if you stop and think. The middle of the infield uh, has really been Freddie Galvis and Cesar Hernandez, but short of that, just about every other position with Franco out, they're they're platooning guys at this point. Darren Ruff is part of that. Ruff playing against the left-hander here. Darren lines that one to left field. It's fairly deep. And Dietrich is able to make the catch. And there are two outs. 
joking with Darren today about using the fence last night. I said, you know, it would have been cooler if you hit the foul pole and let it bounce up. And he said, you realize my last two home runs have been right off the top of the fence in both both times. Ditcher does makes a nice play. You're going back on the line drive. Both of his last two home runs. Yeah. And Turner Field, he said he hit one that went off the oh, top yeah. of the fence. Here's Darnell Sweeney making his first major league start. Darnell is playing for Odubel Herrera, who is not starting for the first time since the 29th of July. Actually, thought it was longer than that. Uh, but Ben Revere started in center field that day against the Toronto Blue Jays. This is last night, and he jumped all over this pitch. Well, first pitch that he wanted to be aggressive pinch hitting. He was cut her down and in. Destroyed that to left field, and he did not have to pay Gordon five thousand dollars to get the ball back. He did not. Uh, one of the security officers tracked where that ball went. It was picked up by a fan, and before D. Gordon stepped in front of the security officer, he contacted the Phillies clubhouse, saying, "We have the person who caught the ball or picked up the ball. Do you want it?" And Phil Sheridan for the Phillies clubhouse uh, said, "Yes, we want it." And it took two autographed baseballs from the Philadelphia Phillies for the home run ball to be retrieved. Probably two Ryan Howard balls. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, he, he said autographed balls, but it may have been just one particular player. His comment after the game it was definitely a good feeling. I put a good swing on a good ball, and the ball carried out. Well, it carried out all right. Now he has stolen 32 bases this year down in the minor leagues, so he's got some wheels. Elvis takes outside 1 0. Talking to him today, he said he was surprised that we picked up on the uh, conversation the conversation between he and D. Gordon. You tell him this is a big league son. We have cameras everywhere. That's right. I said, well, I said also that D. Gordon was kind of emphatic about it. This is yesterday. There's Darnell looking at D. after the home run. And D. Gordon is telling him, I'm going to get the ball. And you have to give me five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. <laughs> Ready? What? <laughs> That's awesome. They know the scouting report on him. Juan Samuel knows his move because be just as he lifts his foot, you can hear Juan yelling back. Sweeney, we mentioned stole 32 bases this year in the minor leagues. He has 122 minor league stolen bases. Galvez shows bunt, takes outside two and one. He's pretty quick to home though. He doesn't really do a slide step. He doesn't do a big leg kick. It's about a, a quarter of the way kick. He's pretty quick to home. Sweeney peeking over John Miserock for the signs. They might send him here. What do you think? Well, you could. I mean, it's a two ball, two strike, good time for a breaking ball. If you get thrown out, you got Freddie still leading off the next inning. Broken bat, looper out toward left center field. That's going to drop for a hit. Sweeney's on his way to third, and he'll get there easily. So the Phillies have first and third with two men down. That's the first hit of the day for the Phillies. Fifth hit in the series for Freddie Galvis, and now Cameron Rupp will bat. Nice dog by Freddie, out in front of it a little bit, but hand stayed back. Broke his bat. Does not matter when it. You get a knock on it. 
You see Sweeney right here. Nice. Oh, to have that speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he coasted it to third. We're up two for three in the series with a walk so far. Now this is not necessarily the uh, the time of the game where the Phillies have done their best work in this series. They've only scored one run. That was in game one in the first three innings uh, of the last three games. But it would be nice to break that trend, get an early lead, build on it. Well, yeah, it was a hanging changeup, which is fine. If he wasn't sitting changeup, he's sitting on the fastball, a certain area. Stay with your game plan. That one's up the third base line, foul ball. I thought it hit his foot. To think of maybe they might try to try to steal a run right here. And Freddy Galvis takes off and hopefully they throw through and he stops and Mathis came out and gave different signs. Galvis goes, pitches in the dirt, and no throw. So that will be a stolen base. Third. Now this is the area as a, as an eight hole hitter. You got a three balls, two strikes. Pitchers on deck. There's no way he's going to challenge me. You're thinking. So since you threw him a two zero changeup, take a chance at three zero three two changeup right here. Check swing. Well, he did throw him the changeup, but it didn't look like Cameron was ready for it. One three on the putout. And the Phillies lead two in scoring position. No runs, one hit, and two men left. We'll move to the bottom of the second. Phillies nothing, Marlins nothing. Tomorrow night at 5, Michael Barquette is joined by Philly's top sports writers to talk about and recap the Eagles Ravens preseason game, plus a look ahead at the Phil's Mets series at Citizens Bank Park. Watch Philly Sports Talk presented by Comcast Business right here on Comcast Sportsnet. I can't believe they convinced Larry to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry will do anything for good hair. Aaron Noah. 
goes to work in the bottom of the second against Justin Bohr, Marcel Ozuna, and Cole Gillespie. Bohr was up when Dietrich was thrown out trying to steal. And the bottom of the first. Side one and fly ball right field. That was a change up from Aaron Noah, and he got him out front for the first out. Today's broadcast is also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television to change the language through the menu. On your cable box. First change up of the day. Marcelo Zuna, who had a 17 game hitting streak against the Phillies, snapped last night, hitting 246 with six home runs, 29 runs batted in. You go over his numbers uh, since he's been brought back from the minor leagues, he's hitting only 214. But unless you went back and looked at it, you wouldn't know it by just the series against the Phillies. Because as we've talked about, he just hits well against this team. Three for 12 in the series so far. But this is a guy that he should be better than 214 since his return from the minor leagues. The big discuss is is he going to be around next year? Or are they thinking about trading him? I like him as a player. I do too. Strike three called. Well, he certainly has good command today, at least through the first inning and two thirds. You know, this is just I mean, look. Cameron has the glove right to the glove. No chance of hitting that ball. But we've seen some guys, and I don't know if they're having a hard time picking the ball up. Bohr's the same way. He took a 2 0 fastball and a 3 1 fastball. His first at bat, like before Nietzsche got thrown out, and didn't even think about swinging. Curveball. Because Zuna didn't even swing. A brand new bat. I guess he didn't want to get no marks on it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't take BP today, so he didn't use it. Over to shortstop to his left is Galvis. He's able to get to it as a dive going through the grass. And the side is retired in order. A very efficient inning for Aaron Nola. He sets down the Marlins 1 2 3. He'll lead things off offensively when we come back at the top of the third here in South Florida.
Tribute question. Log on to phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information. Please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Matt, here we go. Which two Marlins pitchers recorded the most shutouts by a starter in the franchise's history? Answer will be revealed a little later on. They've had some good pitchers over the years. Nola will lead it off. Balls two strikes to Aaron Noah. And he fouls it over the screen. Noah overall hitting 167. He has two hits and 12 at bats. Just foul. Conservative play by the ball boy, as you would expect. Nowhere near as good as the play we watched last night in Oakland by the ball boy down the left field line. If you get a chance, just Google it. 0 2 pitch coming to Nola. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number one for Adam Conley. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, an update between the Brewers and the Nationals. Brewers jump out to a 2 0 lead on a first inning home run by Jonathan Lucroy. Nationals uh, find themselves five games back of the Mets in the East. Braves are 13 and a half back. Marlins 16 and a half. Phillies 17 and a half. Cesar takes outside. One ball, no strikes. Tom, I think I'm going to need a hint on that stump question. I can give you one. We're both right-handers. Was there a righty and a lefty? Uh, if I gave you that one right now, you would probably get it. <laughs> I will tell you that uh, both of these pitchers are former Marlins and former Phils. Two balls, no strikes to Cesar. Well, I know one's my buddy. Three and zero. Oh. The other one's everybody's buddy. He's the kind of guy he is. All four. So Cesar draws a walk. Now that is the second walk issued by Conley. That'll bring Andres Blanco to the plate. Calling all K through fifth grade students, the Phillies and the Ryan Howard Big Peace Foundation invite you to the ultimate back to school read along event taking place at Citizens Bank Park on Saturday, October 3rd. Join Ryan and his wife Crystal as they make their book series Little Rhino Come Alive during a pregame read along event. Visit Phillies.com slash read along for more information. Now, I will tell you that uh, Crystal is going to read. And Ryan is apparently going to uh, act out the books. Nice. He's going to be Little Rhino, which he's not little. Well, compared to a few years ago, he is. Well, that's true. I told him, I said, you could do that. I said, you're an actor. You were in the office. <laughs> oh, and one to Andres Blanco. One ball, one strike. Great idea, though. Ryan and Crystal to do those uh, books. Money and proceeds going to the uh, Ryan Howard Foundation. Big Peace Foundation. One ball, one strike to Blanco. Who has hit in five straight. And he lines that one to left field. Dietrich going back on it. It's over his head and off the base of the wall. He plays it well, and that's going to hold Hernandez to third. Andres Blanco is a doubles machine. That's his fourth of the series. And it's his 15th of the season. And the Phils have second and third with one man down. Well, we got lucky. I mean, that's a very good swing, and he puts a very good, easy swing on it and drives it to the left. Dietrich came in a little bit, had that little loop, 
going after. He doesn't go, turn right away. There he comes in a little bit. Then he realizes, I don't think he would have had an opportunity anyway. But misreading it allowed him to play it off the wall very nicely and keep it to a non-RBI double. Well, here's Altair. They'll play the infield back. Aaron grounded out his first time up. Takes a fastball, and it's 0-1. Altair batting third. This is where Odubel Herrera is usually the hitter, at least of late. Odubel didn't know what to do with himself today. <laughs> Walking around the clubhouse, shorts on, a t shirt. Second bus. Or no, he went down early enough. He went down early break. enough, yeah. He didn't he didn't go on the bus. So Juan Samuel said, hey, if you're looking for something to do, I'll hit you fly balls. There's a fly ball to center field. Ozuna settles under it. Tagging from third is Hernandez. He comes running in. He's going to fire to the plate. Oh, man. He's going to sail it over everybody's head. That enables Blanco to go to third. It's 1 0 Phillies. A sack fly for Aaron Altair. I would say that throw got away. E9 to allow Blanco, I guess, to go to third. He wasn't tagging. Well, he was tagging, but he didn't break until. Yeah, these are the throws right here where you get behind it really nice, comes in full speed, and then brings the rain. Oh, yeah, he was going on that, so it's not an error. It's not going to be an error. It's just going to be advance on the fly ball. And great technique. Yeah. And great technique. Just air a little high. Actually, since a little high, very high. Very high. So no error, just a sack fly, and the runners advance. Francoeur grounded a shortstop his first time up. Frenchy needs to hit a ball to right field. Pulling off a little bit too much. Yeah, he's attacking. You know, even right there, the way he's attacking it, he's he's going after it very hard. His head's getting down there, and then all of a sudden, everything's just thrown towards third base. Better take. It's all right. Taking some pitches is a good thing a lot of times. It's a way to get your timing back. Frank Core breaks his bat. Ground ball to shortstop. Echeverria has it. Phillies are retired here in the third, but they do strike first. They get a run on one hit. The sack fly by Altair. We'll move to the bottom of the third. It's one nothing Phils.
Dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer. Visit DelValHondaDealers.com. And by Jefferson, where health is all we do. Call 1-800-JEMP now or visit Jefferson.edu. Matt, would you get caught one caught in one of those? Oh, I would absolutely love it. I tell you, I'd be going a lot faster than that right there. Yeah, he looks very conservative going through the water. Echeverria will lead things off for the Marlins. Seven, eight, nine. Echeverria, Mathis, and Conley against Aaron Noah, who has been given a one nothing lead. He bunts and it hits him in the box. 0 and 1. Echeverria, 282, five homers, 45 runs batted in. To his right is Galvis. And a quick out. So one away. And Mathis is coming up. <laughs> Mathis hitting 129. Well, you better be a good defensive catcher. Eight hits and 62 at bats. Amazing, isn't it? He's been here most of the year. Well, Real Muto plays all the time, so he does. You don't want a young backup catcher. Big hop for Blanco. And two away. Comley coming up. Phillies fans, did you know the StubHub app is personalized just for you? Get the StubHub app today. Start at StubHub and let the fun find you. StubHub is the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of Phillies.com. It's pretty good seats to be had for today's game. Conley is two for five. There's a strike one and one. One and two. Hefty swing. Conley had not had a base hit professionally until this year when he picked up uh, three in New Orleans. Swing and a miss. And strikeout number two. No fooling around for Aaron Nola. He punches out his counterpart. We're through three here at Marlins Park. Phillies lead the Marlins 1 0 as we go to the fourth.
Needed in extra innings and need a boost? Call W.B. Mason and order Green Mountain Coffee K-Cup Pods. Great tasting coffee at amazingly low prices. Delivered free the very same day when you order by 11.30 a.m. W.B. Mason knocks it out of the park. Who but W.B. Mason. Well, Darnell Sweeney will be due up seconds in this inning. It'll be Darren Rupp, Darnell, and Freddie Galvis. Big rip by Darren, and it's 0-1. Darren flied out to the track in left field his first time up. Pops that one up. Math is off with the mask and out of room. 0-2. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in True HD and over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.tv Premium. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widget, and more every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. And Darren holds his swing. There's a liner down the left field line that'll stay fair and go down toward the corner and Darren will get two out of it and for rough that'll be his 10th double of the year. All right so the Phils get a runner in scoring position to start an inning for the first time today. See a little different approach from Darren the last three to four games that he started and one is being more aggressive Two is being he's getting that pull mode. Which I don't mind. He's been swinging the bat well, making good contact. You know, this is a changeup low and away, and you can see that top hand takeover. I mean, the kid has a good swing, and he's strong. I like the fact the first one he went after, and he swung hard and missed it. So what? Let's see what Sweeney does here with the uh, corners pinching in. Takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Sweeney was hitting 271 with nine homers and 49 runs batted in with the Dodgers AAA affiliate. I asked him, I said, did you get word that you could possibly uh, be brought up to Los Angeles at some point uh, over the next week or two? Of course, we didn't know that he was in discussions to be traded to the Phillies. He said, well, he said, we had heard uh, down there that there was going to be some moves and my name had been brought up. He said, but, you know, you anticipate it, but. You just let the games right. let the games come as they are because you never know. He said I did think I put myself in position to help in some way shape or form. Whether defensively or offensively. Two and one to Sweeney with a runner at second. Inside three and one he walked his first time up. Tried. Try to go to the right side. Yep. No, not worry about hitting the ball to right field, but think up the middle now. Ball four, he walks for the second time.
Galvis took a long look at John Miserock over in the third base coach's box. All Rock did was swing his arms and clap. Now same situation first and second. Not out. Think about hitting, hitting a ball to right field or right center here. Need to advance the runner from second to third. That's what he tried to do. Bohr is way in up was way in on the grass at first base. And Bohr was way in, so was Prado. I mean, if he lays a bunt down. All right, now you get the force out at first base. You have second, third, one out. You're going to walk Cameron to get to the pitcher and go for the strikeout. Now you're in bottle mode. Ground ball left side. Chavaria has it. They go to second for one. Not able to turn the double play. So first and third with one man down. Six four the put out at second base. Dan Jennings is coming up the stairs. I think Freddie beat that pretty easily. And Cameron Rupp will be the batter. It's a good feed. It's a good turn by Gordon, a strong throw, but good hustle by Freddie Galvis. <laughs> Conway doesn't agree with it. Now they're meeting on the mound. I think they were just uh, biding some time. So here's Rupp. Cameron tapped one back to the mound his first time up. All right, so now he's got to remember his first at bat. He had a 2 0 changeup and a 3 1 changeup, or a 3 2 changeup. In the dirt, 1 0. Bill's got a sack fly in the third inning. That's how they scored their run off the bat of Aaron Altair. Comes a change up. Sailed outside, two balls, no strikes. If you keep an eye on Mathis when he gives the signs, watch him take a peek at the hitter to see if he's looking down to see where the signs are or where you're setting up. Nobody's got that good of eyes to look down <laughs> between the guy's legs to see a sign. I always wonder if somebody did, if there was some guy, that, you know, that people always talk about certain players being really good at picking things up. I mean, you were good at picking things up. Mm -hmm. I always wondered about that. If, if there was a guy that would be that was really good at being able to do that. As they will finish this off by walking rough intentionally. Well I think the, the longer you, you play the game and, and. You can get a feel for if a pitcher or I'm sorry excuse me if, if a, a catcher. Is close to you mm -hmm. you feel crowded. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean how you'll sit there and all of a sudden someone stands behind you. You know, you get a feel for where the catch up sets up. A lot of catchers are very noisy when they move. You can hear their feet moving away from you. What a nice little push bunt towards second base. Does he have it in him? Find out. Easy RBI. Oh, and two. How about the other night, George Valandia? <laughs> after Jared Eikhoff's first at bat, where he tried to bunt and was all over the place. And he even talked about it where he squared and 
you know, face the pitcher. <laughs> he went back to the dugout after the inning was over, and Jorge said, "Come on, come with me." And he brought him back underneath, and he said, "I had to teach him right there how to bunt." He said, "Because if not, he was going to get himself hurt." Yeah. And we mentioned that too in the air. So they worked on it uh, while the Phillies were hitting. I guess it was the next time, and he was in the cage working on bunting. Balls two strikes to Aaron Noah. He struck out his first time up. Phils lead at one nothing. First two batters reached in this inning on a double and a walk. Swing and a miss, two away. So now they'll lean on Cesar Hernandez to try to pick up a clutch hit with two men down. It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag Philly Photo Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Phillies are 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position here this afternoon. Says are a little long with that first swing. He walked his last time up and scored the only run. He's also fly to right field. Good pitch. Very good pitch, low and away. I think he's wondering how did I miss it, but well, kind of pulled off a little bit. He hasn't seen the ball yet come across home plate. Yeah. This is where I was talking about the games of adjustment. Your second time through playing against a team, and now they've seen him three times. This is the fourth game in a row, and everyone knows in the league he can hit a fastball, but you have to make the adjustment to try to. Learn how to hit the off-speed pitch. 0-2 pitch coming to Hernandez. He hits a foul down the right field line. I mean, when Cesar was hitting 299, 300, going through the series, he was getting a lot of fastballs, and he was squaring up a lot of fastballs, hitting line drives everywhere. Then all of a sudden, the report goes out that he's a very good fastball hitter. You know, starts throwing some Bugs Bunny change ups and some curveballs. And it's a matter of him just trusting his hands more and letting the ball get deeper and recognizing the pitch instead of anticipating, okay, here comes the fastball and I'm taking a swing. And you know, his left shoulder goes towards third and yeah. his. Head up, his head goes towards the third base dugout. That's pretty evident right now with yeah. these swings, with all these swings. Off speed pitches, you have to use your lower half when you hit. No balls and two strikes. Taps it foul again, and again, the same kind of swing. And they continue to work it away, away, away. I mean, Jeff Mathis is smart. He sees this. At least I would think he does. Oh, yeah. Forcing Conley to throw a lot of pitches. He's at 82 pitches. And we're still in the fourth inning here this afternoon. Andres Blanco on deck. And, and I mentioned a few minutes ago, or a couple seconds ago, about hitting an off speed pitch, you have to use your lower half. And what right now, with the pitches that Cesar has been swinging at with the changeup, he almost becomes a tippy toe hitter. When he swings, he's coming out of the zone a little bit, and he's, and he's swinging on top of his toes. They're going to come inside, way inside, one and two. You know, the theory is, is when you start low and you get your hands back in that position, when you're going forward, you need to stay low. If you start high, you need to get in that low position, stay there. But he has the straight knees right now. 
swing and a miss. They got him. Well, they set him up with that last pitch. Phillies leave him loaded here in the fourth inning. They got the first two batters aboard. They waste the leadoff double by Darren Ruff. And that's three strikeouts now for Conley. No runs, one hit, three men left. And a strikeout at the end as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. And by Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Well, where we're going right now is to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Phillies, a 1 0 lead. Probably should be a little bit more, but give Conley some credit. He was able to work, a, work around a bases loaded situation. Even with his pitch count rising. D. Gordon leads it off against Aaron Nola. He flied out his first time up. Takes inside, 1 0. Well, you talked earlier about Mathis, the struggle of hitting. You saw what a venture can do behind home plate. Oh, yeah. Cesar comes charging in, one away. Just one hit allowed so far by Nola. That was a single by Prado, who was coming up. Tired eight straight since that base hit. Breaking ball again. It's two and one. Aaron Nola's last three starts has an ERA of 5.63. Part of that, and we have percentages about everything, is that guys aren't chasing as much as they were before. He gets Prado out front on that one, scooped up beautifully by Freddie Galvis. Another two outs. Deja vu. Just like yesterday. I think your comment yesterday was good hands, and that's exactly what you have on this play. Well, the key is is that he's he goes down, and he brings his glove up. You know, you're not quick enough to go up, you know, start up high and go down to get the ball, but he just comes in with that confidence. Tremendous hands, soft hands. <laughs> I would have had two errors already by now if on that play. <laughs> Here's Dietrich. He reached out a fielder's choice his first time up. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup. And I know it's hard to believe by looking at this frame. Short I was stop. drafted as a shortstop. Shortstop, baby. Tell you how good I was. I've never ever played 
an out, an inning, a pitcher, anything in there. All right, well, professional. But when you were when you were signed, I mean, did you think you were playing shortstop when you were oh, signed? Absolutely. When did they tell you that you weren't? The day I got there. What did they say? Uh, sorry, son. You're going to second base or third. And I went to third, and they saw that was a a mess. Now, why was that a mess if you were able to play shortstop? Is it too close? No, I no, I just had slow. I had bad feet. Okay. Slow feet. So did you move to second after that? Uh, quickly to DH. <laughs> Here's the one one to Dietrich in no, the dirt. I played the outfield quite a bit. Playing defense is like hitting, having confidence. I didn't have confidence in defense. Just a bit outside, and it's three and one. Ball four. So first walk issued by Noah after retiring nine straight. But I'll bring four to the plate. On the outside corner, boy, that's a pitcher's pitch right there. I was about to say that that slipped out of his hand. <laughs> a high fly ball, left center field. Altair and Sweeney are there. Sweeney makes the call, and then it'll be the final out. Here in the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, and one man left. Just one hit allowed by Aaron Nola through four. We'll head to the top of the fifth. Andres Blanco leads it off. Up the fans trivia quiz answer. All right, Matt, here we go. Which two Marlins pitchers recorded the most shutouts by a starter in franchise history? That Crocker Gator alligator has nothing to do with the answer, by the way. Andres Blanco takes a strike. It's 0 1. AJ Burnett. AJ Burnett is correct. Congratulations on getting one of the two. Uh, Very there was a lot of there was a lack of confidence with that bell by the way. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I was going to say Pavano. I don't Carl know. The, I don't, Pavano, I don't know. Pavano was a good guess. I don't know the other guy. 
John Lieber. John Lieber was he a good guess. I don't think he played with the Marlins, though. <laughs> Dontrell Willis. How about me? I'm so uh, ingrained in telling you that that's a good guess. When you said John Lieber, I said, yeah, that's a good guess. <laughs> he didn't play, <laughs> play here. <laughs> One away. It'll bring Aaron Altair to the plate. Let's check in with Greg Murphy, Murph. All right, thanks, Tom. Well, Aaron Altair, one of three Phillies players this week to record their uh, first major league hit, and that's got us thinking uh, if that was a rare occurrence or not. Believe it or not, it has happened two other times in Major League Baseball this year alone. It happened in Cleveland back in June, and in April, it happened with uh, Tampa Bay. So three guys getting their first major league hit in a, in a week, but also... Five different Phillies have gotten their first major league home run this season. That's second best in baseball. Uh, only Tampa Bay has more. They have seven players that recorded their first home run this year. And it's been since uh, 1996 that the Phillies have had five guys go deep for the very first time in a season. That season, back in 96, the Phillies had eight different players record their first major league home run. It's pretty impressive. Well, this youth movement, you figure you're going to have some, uh, some feats like that. But to have three guys in uh, a week get their first major league yeah. hit, I was shocked when I saw that two other teams did it. Yeah, I was too, Tom. To be honest with you, I thought you know it would, we'd have to go back years to find something yeah. like that. But uh, you know, uh, our producer Jeff Alekman pointed out September call-ups. It probably happens maybe more than we think. But uh, certainly, you know, three guys recording their first major league hit in a week. It, it seems like a rare occurrence mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Well, and, and it's we talk about a game of adjustments. And I'm glad to see that you made the game of adjustment by moving over <laughs> from the flagpole so you can see. <laughs> yes, I did. You know, thank you for pointing that out, Coach. <laughs> I needed that. You are the general neighborhood, though, but that is good. We don't see any of the flagpoles. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah. sneak back behind it. <laughs> you get great reception, though, from your phone while you're out there. That's right. Frank Gore swings and misses a high fastball. Phillies go down quietly and in order in this fifth inning. Four strikeouts for Conley. Middle of the fifth, it's the Phillies one and the Marlins nothing. Junior RBI League has been teaching kids how to play the game since 1989. And this year will reach more than 6,000 kids, providing uniforms and donations of gloves and other equipment. At Citizens Bank, we want to help you bank better. So the next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. Aaron Nola will face Marcelo Zuna, Cole Gillespie, and Adani Echevarria as we begin the bottom of the fifth. Yes, Matt. Lozuna struck out looking his first time up, and then he swings at the first pitch. Jeff Francourt comes running in. What away. Cole Gillespie is now the hitter. Just one hit so far. 
for Aaron Noah. One hit allowed. Conley's thrown 93 pitches, Noah 50. But Conley's only allowed the one run. See where the uh, Rockies designated Rafael Betancourt for assignment? Really? Yeah. Do you think somebody will pick him up? Absolutely. They just felt like the they must have put him through waivers, and somebody if they wanted him would have claimed it. Curveball, 0 and 2, or 1 and 2, I should say. Although he doesn't have that uh, zip that he used to no. have on his fastball and his cutter. Still, though, veteran pitcher. Two strikes to Gillespie. Gillespie, 388 in the month of August. As a starter, he's hitting 344 for the Marlins. And he gets him looking. Well, that's the second time today he's gotten a hitter looking with a pitch that looked like it was right down the middle. Well, it's time now for our cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. The win today will clinch the Phillies' first series win in Miami since May 20th to the 22nd, 2013. The Phillies have lost five consecutive series at Marlins Park dating to 2013, September 2013. Echeverria grounded out to short his first time up. He bunts. It'll roll. Stay fair. The worst thing in the world because Mathis is coming up. It's an excellent bunt though. He tried to do that in his last step bat, but it hit him. It's an absolute perfect bunt. You know, first you have that little bounce, and you think, well, if it get over just a little bit more and hit the grass, it would have rolled foul, but. Is grounded out to Blanco his first time up. Did you see last night the Texas Rangers the bond against Beltre? I did not. He was rolling and rolling. He looked around to see if anyone was looking and kicked the foul. Oh, did he really? <laughs> Gotta have fun at the old ballpark, Matt. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Rangers have played themselves into the wild card. They are the second team now in the wild card. Bannister has done a heck of a job as the first year manager of the Texas Rangers. In fact, the American League wild card race is, is up for grabs. There are four or five teams that are well within reach of making some noise, including the Tigers. Who traded Cespedes and David Price. You go down as far as the White Sox, they're four and a half out. You got Detroit, Tampa, Minnesota, Baltimore, LA. Foul tip, one and two. I still feel the, the big story of the year is the Astros. Oh, the fact they've been able to sustain it. Unbelievable. One ball, two strikes to Mathis.
tell you the Major League scoreboard. The Tigers lead the Rangers two to one. Cole Hamels has given up seven hits in four innings of work. Ball spun foul. There remains one and two. Conley's on deck. I would think that they would pinch hit for him if the spot comes up. In fact, Ichiro's taking some swings in the dugout as we speak. Is looking for Larry Boa to get on the phone to have them look at it underneath. Now, this was awfully close with the naked eye. He was safe. Tied him in the elbow. Well, that's close. I think he depends on where his hand was when he put his hand on the bag. All right, they're going to wave it off. Take a look again. Down, boys. It's a great slide on the back part. Hands on the bag. Takes the elbow. One ball, two strikes. Really close. <laughs> wow. I love that shot though. Down the left field line. Foul. It is great having that technology to slow things down like that. And it's amazing too the difference. You know, Angel Hernandez is looking at it full speed. You and I are looking at it slow mo. I still thought he was out, or you thought he was safe. These guys are good at what they do. They may exasperate you at times, but they are good at what they do. One and two. Over the screen. Spoiling some pitches here. Chavria looks like he wants to run. Not picking up Noah's move for some reason. He's making these awfully close. He wants to go. Had him leaning. Rudder goes. Pitch is low. Throw to second base is high. And it's a Maria swipes his seventh bag of the year. Well, now if you're Noah, you just go after the hitter. It's two balls, two strikes. Well, there's not much camera could do here because this is an unbelievable jump. Takes a peek in, but even slows down for the slide. Camera with a strong throw, a high throw, but no chance. I'll keep an eye on my second. Yeah, he's got a good size lead. Out toward right field, Hernandez, the second baseman, is there, and he makes the catch. Side is retired. No runs, one hit, just the second hit of the day for the Marlins. We'll go to the sixth inning. The Phillies still hanging to a one nothing lead.
offense, whether he's in the lineup or coming off the bench. A season ago, Francoeur wasn't sure if his career would continue much longer. In 2015, he has delivered plenty of production at the plate. And August has been no different as Jeff continues to produce, batting well above 300 for the month. Frenchie brings offense. Frenchie brings smiles and energy to the Phillies dugout on a daily basis. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, so far today, Jeff Francoeur is 0 for 3. He's grounded out a couple of times, but the Phillies have a 1 0 lead. And Darren Ruff will lead things off against Adam Conley as we go to the top of the sixth inning. Darren doubled his last time up. Conley originally drafted by the Minnesota Twins out of high school. He grew up in Pullman, Washington, and then went to Washington State. His first real significant time on the mound at Washington State was as a closer. In fact, uh, as a sophomore, he saved 12 games, which was the Washington State school record at the time. Aaron Ruff out toward left center field. Here comes Dietrich. He dives and he makes the catch. Aaron Ruff has just been robbed of potentially his second double of the day. One out here in the sixth inning. And that is our Hyundai defensive play of the game. Yep, Dietrich makes a nice play. Good read off the bat. Big swing. Recognize that's off the end of the bat. Float dive. Good concentration right here for a guy that's usually playing second base. Here's Sweeney who fouls the first pitch away. It's 0 1. That is your Hyundai defensive play of the game brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Closed his eyes. That's two nice plays on Darren. First one, the mm -hmm. line drive over his head. Sweeney has walked both times today. Swing and a miss, and he is out number two. Five strikeouts now for Conley. The young man's really settled in with two outs. Freddie Galvis coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, well, as promised earlier in the game, guys, we have selected the Data Strong fan photo of the game. Today's photo comes from at Samantha Carly XO, celebrating 13 plus years with Chase and those memories. A little selfie from photo day, I believe. If it meant uh, Samantha, tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag Philly photo data strong fan. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. All brought to you by the good folks at T-Mobile. All right, Murph, we appreciate that. Chase Utley did have a hit last night. His first hit in a Dodgers uniform. They are leading the Astros 1-0 right now. Does he have two hits or he have a hit? Double today. Double today. Playing second base. You are correct, sir. Somehow the Astros solved Zach Greinke last night. It's all because of Altuve. Altuve has great numbers against Zach Greinke. And he hit a home run against him last night. That helped the Astros win that ball game. Two and one to Freddie Galvis. Two and two. This kid's gaining some confidence as this game's moving on. Good thing this will be the last inning. Leading off the next inning. 103 pitches. Was well, his last start I found very interesting. Through three innings, punched out six. Then the next two thirds of an inning, he gave up seven hits and four runs. Night and day, second time around through the order. Whereas today, it looked like he adjusted. He adjusted as it went through. Maybe it's Mathis who adjusted for him. Well, um, coming into today, the league was hitting 304 versus his changeup. Up the third base line, charging his Prado. Nice play. 
Galvis retired. One, two, three go to Phils for the second consecutive inning. Eight in a row retired by Conley as his afternoon is probably done. Com and buy McDonald's. Double the love at McDonald's with a double cheeseburger and small fry for just $2.50. McDonald's, ah, I'm loving it. Well, Matt, if you don't know how to make a Cuban sandwich by now, I don't know if you'll ever figure it out. We've been showing this gentleman making Cuban sandwiches all weekend long. And he's got a little shtick going with it. What's it on roast beef, though? Ham, pork. He's quick. The bread looks good. Murph. <laughs> Murph, Matt wants a Cuban sandwich. Yeah, I'm going to need to get him one of those. I'll bring it on the bus for you. Yeah. Bring one for uh, Kevin Camasholi. He usually brings his pizza, so you should bring up a Cuban sandwich. <laughs> Itro is going to lead things off here in the bottom of the six. Pinch hitting. Itro started the first three games of the series. Ground ball to first. I love listening to Cameron Rupp yell. <laughs> well, there's a ground ball to the right side. Over! Over! Sixty six pitches. And he's got command of the strike zone. Nineteenth batter he's now faced. This is D. Gordon. He's 0 for 2. Throws a strike. So 13 of 19 first pitch strikes. Conley goes six innings. He allows just three hits and one run. Hmm. One ball and one strike. Chris Narvison. It's technically the long man for the Marlins. Back toward the middle and uh, into center field a base hit. A reminder that tomorrow night is country music night at Citizens Bank Park. Enjoy country music bands and much more. Order your tickets now at phillies.com slash country to be one of the first 2000 fans to receive the exclusive Phillies camo snapback hat. It's all part of a four game series pitching matchup. We'll have Jacob DeGrom against Adam Morgan. In case you can't see the hat, Tom, it's right here. I know it's camo. <laughs> <laughs> First 2,000 fans. 
Prado's one for two. He singled his first time up, one of three hits for the Marlins. Goes pitch out, Rupp's throw to second base is in time on the money. Gordon ta uh, caught. He's hurt too. Yeah, I think he hurt his hand, the hand that he injured earlier this season. That was a great throw. Great decision, too, to have the pitch out at that point. Yeah, good call by Pete. He gets a tremendous jump, but the perfect pitch out and a strike to second base. Left hand looks like he jams himself right there. Look at that. That's a perfect throw. It's a cannon. Freddie just got him, too. <laughs> Back toward the middle. To his left is Galvis. He gobbles it up. Side is retired. Boy, another quick inning for Aaron Nola. 73 pitches in six innings of work. He is cruising. He allows a hit, but that's it. Cameron Rupp has thrown out two today. Summary. The story today is Aaron Nola. Six innings, three hits, no runs, one walk, and three strikeouts. Aaron Altair is accounted for the only run. It was on a sack fly in the third. The Marlins offense, the first two innings of this series, they scored eight runs. The last 30 innings, they've scored four. That's why the Phillies have taken the last two games and they lead game four. One to nothing. Aaron Nola. Will bat second to start this inning, and he'll do so against the new pitcher, Chris Narvison, who takes over for Adam Conley. I don't know what kind of pitcher Adam Conley is going to be as his career unfolds, but I thought he showed some pretty good yeah, he threw some, very well. some pretty good stuff today. He did. He locked his change up in. He fast but wife, fastball in. Wasn't afraid to throw one side. He pitched a very well, a, a very good ball game today. You know, and this is the, the the throw right here, the pitch out. You know, everyone talks about wow, it's a pitch out. This is what they do in spring training. After every time they throw a bullpen, it's always a, a pitch out to a left-handed hitter and a right-handed hitter. So it's very nice. One, he didn't change his delivery, Nola. He still went with the big leg kick, threw a strike where you're supposed to be, and Cameron came up firing to second base. Well, Cameron leads things off. The fact that he's thrown two runners out trying to steal today is a big deal. More runners you keep out of scoring position, the better it is in such a tight ball game. Yeah, two pitches and you're ready right the inning. Two and one. But the key is when he did it, when Nola did the pitch out, he didn't do a slide step because there's a pretty good chance that D. Gordon would have stopped. He did his regular routine of a, of a wind up. 
That one's hit well down the right field line. If it's fair, it's gone. It is off the foul pole, a home run. Cameron Rupp has given the Phils a 2 0 lead. Man, was that a strong swing! It's his fifth home run of the year. All right, seriously. Usually when you hit an opposite field home run, you hit, you know, a couple feet above the foul pole, opposite field. This is halfway up. Oh, yeah, he crushed it. I mean, and he knows it. Right off the K. Well, that made a winner out of Jerry Boyle of Freeland, who's just won 100 bucks thanks to Cameron Rupp in our McDonald's home run jackpot. Yeah, that was a shot. All right, maybe not. Halfway up, but close to it. Well, it's a pretty good way up there. Still a blast. No balls and two strikes to Nola, who has a two nothing lead. Who said this lineup wasn't packed with home run hitters? <laughs> and Nola strikes out for the third time today. He knew it. Went away for Cesar Hernandez. I love home runs. <laughs> Cesar is 0 for 2. He walked and scored back in the third, fly to right, and struck out in his other two at bats. Fly ball right field. Set himself a good day. A couple of guys thrown out, which he's he's obviously happy about. And now a home run to pad this lead. Blanco one for three. His one hit a double. Couple of good pitches. That one was even better than the first one. Thought he had the green light. He gets a strike here, Blanco. He's going to take one wicked swing. And there you go. A base hit up the middle. A two out single for Andres Blanco. Blanco two for four in this ball game. Goya Latino family celebration night will be this Friday when the Phillies take on the San Diego Padres. Enjoy the foods, music, and dancing of this annual event. Take part in a special live auction inside the first base gate. Proceeds benefiting Concilio in their efforts to provide social services in the Philadelphia Latino community. Again, at any time, go to phillies.com for more information. Andres Blanco with his two hits today has gotten his average up to 308. 308 with five homers and 15 runs batted in. Kind of makes Pete's decision a little easier if he's going to play again tomorrow. Talked about he wants to get him a couple of days off. Well, when you're the hottest hitter in the lineup right now, you're not going anywhere for a while. Well, and I think Pete is wondering if I take him out, who am I going to have play third? He, right. The thought is, is that they can move Hernandez over to third and have uh, Sweeney play second or have Sweeney play third and keep Cesar at second base. But playing third base is a little easier on your run. They're playing up the middle. Pitching change. Phil's lead at 2 nothing. We'll be back right after this.
with Ellis, Billy, Brooks, and Baker and a special guest on Breakfast on Broad, presented by Virtua Joint Replacement Institute. That's weekday mornings from 6 until 8, over on the Comcast Network. Well, with Matt Stairs and Greg Murphy, I'm Tom McCarthy. We're here at Marlins Park, the final game of this four-game series. Chris Narvison allowed a home run to begin this inning, and now after allowing a single with two outs to Andres Blanco, they'll go to the righty Brian Ellington. Who is on to face the right hander Aaron Altair? Ellington's numbers eight strikeouts and nine and two thirds. He's never faced the Phillies in his major league debut against the Mets on the 3rd of August. Drafted in 2012 by the Marlins, delivers a fastball 0 1. Two to Altair. Altair 0 for 2 today with a sack fly. Upstairs. Jeff Francoeur waits on deck. But it was a good hanger. Yeah. Top of the zone. Fastball fought off. Ninety seven on that one from Ellington. Is Angel Hernandez. That looked like a pretty good pitch. Yeah. Check swing, it did not go. Location of the pitch was pretty good. Breaking ball and a call. Strike three. Altair strikes out looking. One run scores in the home run the opposite way uh, by Cameron Rupp. Phillies leave one. They get two hits overall. It's time to stretch here at Marlins Park. The Phillies have extended their lead to two to nothing. This is the reason why it's two nothing. The opposite way for Cameron Rupp. Yeah, lean a little bit, Cam. That'll do it.
Two nothing fills. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Thank you, Marshall. We appreciate that. Aaron Nola is still out on the mound as uh, he's working on a three hit shutout. Every time the Phillies retire, the opposing team one, two, three. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, the pitch types today for Aaron Nola 21 four seam fastballs, 22 two seam fastballs. Got the one pitch out. We never had the pitch out in the category of the type of pitch. That's funny. We talked about in spring training when we saw Aaron Nolan. We asked about the, the scouting report on him. He said that very good changeup. His third best pitch is his curveball. Well, he doesn't throw very many changeups anymore. But that's a pitch that he's going to have to figure out because the league was hitting 438 versus his, cur versus his changeup. Yeah, today the curveball has been better. You know, last time it looked like uh, it would sweep way too much, where he's getting under it. Uh, you know, we talked about this. He said in his last outing that it was a great learning experience because of the nibbling. People kind of thought he nibbled too much. Uh, so did Bob McClure, and he acknowledged it as soon as the game was over. Bit of a delay right now because Cameron Rupp just fired the throw to second base over everybody's head out into center field. Derek Dietrich will lead it off in this 2 nothing game. Dietrich is 0 for 1, a fielder's choice in a walk. Swings at the first pitch, another first pitch strike, it's 0 1. The outside corner 0 and 2. Yeah, there's depth of the curveball today from top to bottom. Instead of left to right, top to bottom is where the the movement is. Check swing. Did he go? No. Swing and a miss. He got him. Well, he's not a strikeout pitcher. It's just his third of the day, fourth of the day. Well, the key is it's a nice curveball, but it's down in the zone. As a hitter, you try to foul that off. But swing and miss over top of it. So Justin Bohr, who has flied to right, he's also flied to center field. Side one to know. Well, there's a change up from Noah. That one was down. Tear. Two outs and Marcelo Zuna is coming up. On Saturday, the Phillies will be giving out a fathead, a 13 by 26 inch removable wall graphic featuring Phillies logos and third baseman Michael Franco. It's all part of the Saturday 705 game against the San Diego Padres, brought to you by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 98. Again, it's to all fans. Go to Phillies.com to purchase your tickets. Speaking of Mike Kell, he took ground balls yesterday over third base. 
uh, as they continue to ramp it up and see if he's able to to go sooner rather than later. Uh, he wasn't going to do much today. And he's going to take more ground balls tomorrow and then Tuesday he said he's hoping to swing in the cage off a tee. Said he feels a lot better. He said yesterday it didn't really bother him at all when he was taking ground balls. That's the glove hand. That's the side that that is uh, that is injured. One ball and two strikes to Ozuna. Eighty four pitches. Curveball swung on and missed. What an efficient inning for Aaron Nola. Two strikeouts, numbers four and five, as he sets the Marlins down in order. So we played seven here at Marlins Park. The young right hander bouncing back from his last outing has a two nothing lead as we go to the eighth. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop Nissan.com. Buy WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. And buy the Quality Plus Sports Stores. Go further. Well, that would make me dizzy if a boat, if a ship moved that fast and <laughs> turned that fast. <laughs> Top of the eighth inning, Phillies up two to nothing, and Jeff Frank Core will lead it off. He'll do so against Brian Ellington. Breaking ball and it's 0 1. Frank Court today is grounded a shortstop twice and he is struck out. Ball pulled foul. Zero oh and two. Frenchy's timing's off a little bit. I mentioned it earlier in one of his at bats. And uh, a way you can tell if his timing's off is how heavy, how, how hard that left foot's coming down mm -hmm. when he's getting ready to hit. You want it nice and soft, but when you're late, you get that foot down extra quick. Swing and a miss. He went after a high pitch. That's how he was struck out his, first, his uh, last time up. So one away here in the eighth. Darren Ruff's coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy with the Major League Notebook, Murph. 
All right, thanks, Don. Brought to you by St. Joseph's University. And the New York Mets will be in Philadelphia tomorrow to start a four-game series. And David Wright will be there. The team's captain and third baseman will be uh, back in action off of the DL for the first time since mid-April. Of course, he was dealing with that hamstring injury, uh, injury that turned into the back injury. Uh, so he has not played since middle of April, but he will be activated when they come to Philadelphia. And this happened last night, but it is worth mentioning. Josh Donaldson becomes the first player in Major League Baseball to get to the one 100 RBI mark, and he did so with a terrific night. Went four for five last night with a three-run homer uh, home run. He now has 34 home runs on the season. Is batting over 300 and has a hundred. RBIs. Uh, they were chanting MVP when he got back to the dugout, and certainly he is your leader in the clubhouse in the American League right now. Yeah, I would think he is, Murph. We talked about that the other day. The candidates that could be uh, the American League uh, most valuable player, but the way they're playing and the way he has been able to help that lineup, which can really hit anyway, uh, he's he's had a pretty special year. Two outs here at the top of the eighth. And here is Darnell Sweeney. Sweeney takes ball one. Ball two. Out of play, and it's two and one. Two great stories about Darnell Sweeney and Jared Eikhoff. Of course, Sweeney grew up about 20 minutes away from here in Hollywood, Florida. The fact that the Phillies uh, were playing the Marlins was just coincidental. And he was so thankful uh, that once he looked at the schedule, that realized that it was the Marlins that they were that he would open up against because his family would get a chance to see him play. And they're all here. They've been here the entire weekend. The crowd seems to get thicker and thicker uh, as the days have moved on. So that's coincidence number one. Coincidence number two was for uh, Jared Eikhoff. Eikhoff, you know, a lot of his family came in uh, to watch him play, came in from Indiana to watch him play. He said, but his brother and his brother's family was actually, they were actually vacationing here in Florida this week. Just had planned a vacation here. So it turned out that they were able to make a Marlins Phillies game part of their vacation to see him make his major league debut. <laughs> He said it was crazy. Three balls, two strikes. And ball four. He's walked for the third time. And for Sweeney, he said, you know, I actually had started sending some clothes home from uh, from Oklahoma City. You know, because the season's winding down next week. Couple weeks. So he said, I hadn't I thought I would get called up to the Dodgers, but I wasn't sure, so I'm starting to close up my apartment and send everything home. So, so everything arrived at home last week. Now I can just pick some of the stuff up and bring it with me back to Philadelphia. <laughs> Galvis is one for three today. A fielder's choice and a ground out to third. He's also singled. Let's see him run. Was fouls it away. No balls, one strike. Garcia. Mm -hmm. 
mean, the way Sweeney's looking over there to get signs, he must not have the green light. I was thinking the same yeah. thing. Because he looks over every single time. I'd like to see them send him. See what he can do. There he goes. Pitch is high. Throw to second base is in plenty of time. Two six on the put out. Side is retired. No runs, no hits, and nobody left. Strong throw from Jeff Mathis. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Phillies lead it by two. Decision plays of the game, both from the catcher's arm. Cameron Ruff has thrown out two guys so far today. Yeah, he has both times. He's been throws right on the money. You know, Nolan given a chance. Uh, being able to camera throw guys out gives a nice pitch up right there. And he's had a very nice day behind the plate, offensively and defensively. Offensively, his opposite field home run made this a two-nothing game. So now Aaron Noel will go back to work here in the bottom of the eighth inning. He's only thrown uh, 85 pitches as he delivers one on the inside part that's fouled off the foot of Cole Gillespie. And it's no balls in one strike. So 86 pitches now with that one. He went seven and two thirds against the Chicago Cubs. That game, Pete McCannon said, I wanted to take him out after seven because he only allowed, I think, uh, two runs at that point and then gave up three runs. But the Phils had a comfortable lead. No one pitch. Popped him up. Cesar Hernandez, shallow right field. So one away. Echeverria will be the batter. Jose Fernandez talking to Ellington. Saw Fernandez throwing in the outfield today. I should say pitching from flat ground. It wasn't just throwing. I mean, he was in the windup and everything. His glove was as blue as Murph's shirt today. Two and zero. Oh. John Carlos Stanton. He was also out in the outfield today. Now this is uh, stuff that he's doing to keep himself in shape. The hitting part of it is the key, though. They need to get him into the cage and on a consistent basis, and hope that he gets healthy. He's still among the leaders, even though he's missed a lot of the year in home runs and RBIs. Amazing. 27 home runs, 67 runs batted in. Totally different team without him. Ball four. He just walked at Chivaria on four pitches. 
So a one out walk. Second walk issue today by Nola. He was only allowed the three hits. One of them was a bunt single. The other one was a seeing eye base hit up the middle. Araujo and Garcia. He was pretty close last time throwing him out. Yeah, but I, him up. I, I wouldn't worry about him. I, I think you need to concentrate on your hitter. You know, you just walked the the, the hitter prior. You know, go out and pound the strike. So make a quality pitch. If you steal second base, so what? We need to get an out. Yeah, because you're at the bottom of the order. I mean, you've got Mathis who's 0 for 2, and then McGee is out on the on-deck circle to pinch hit. Noah came into this ball game with 144 innings, so seven innings today, 151 and a third on the season. Last year, between college and the pros, he threw 171 and two thirds. There is a an innings limit on him this year. And because of that, the Phillies may go to a six man rotation at some point. Two and one. Dubal stretching his legs out, Matt. Well, he may be tiring a little bit because he's hit missing in that same spot. His velocity is at 87. A high fly ball to left field. It's not deep. Altair comes running in. There are two outs. So he's matched his season high in innings seven and two thirds. There were two away. Casey McGee is going to pinch hit. So they'll let him try to finish this inning off. He's got the lineup card out. Well, this will be definitely his last hitter. Right, because Gordon the lefty will, yes. if, he, if they face him, they'll bring in Araujo to face him. Yep. Casey McGee seven hits as a pinch hitter this year between the Giants and the Marlins. Overall hitting 192. Mm. Not a bad pitch to start him off with. Asked for time, and the home plate umpire did not give it to him. He did what you told him, said the other day, Matt, that he's supposed to do. You're not supposed to put your hand up. You're just supposed to ask for it. If he doesn't give it to you, there's no need to swing. And you're ready to go if you, if you decide to. Don't worry about him at first. 
That mean that run means absolutely nothing in a two nothing game. Boomerang. Big old slurve. Mm -hmm. Even the baseball novice would look at that and say, wow, that's a good pitch. <laughs> One ball, two strikes to McGee. Swing and a miss. He got him. Eight innings, eight shutout innings for Aaron Nola. Six strikeouts along the way, three hits allowed. A fantastic outing by the young right hander. He gets Casey McGee at a breaking ball. We'll go to the ninth inning. The Phillies lead it 2 0 over the Marlins. Aaron Nola roaming the dugout. Larry Boa came over and shook his hand after that curveball. He was chatting a little bit with Carlos Ruiz, and then Pete McCannon came over and shook his hand. So that is usually the indication that, eh, good job, son, your day is done. 100 pitches, 64 strikes. <laughs> I don't know if he was just acting mad there or well, what. Well, I think he wanted to go for the uh, complete game. Yeah, complete game shutout. Marlins will go back to their bullpen. This is Kyle Bearclaw. Bearclaw. 1 0 with a 1.17 ERA. Two pitch pitcher, fastball and a slider. Giles is warming up in the bullpen. He'll be brought on to try to pick up the save. Swing and a miss, so at 1. Dubo Herrera is going to be the pinch hitter. You asked the other day, or you asked earlier today, about Blanco maybe playing tomorrow. As you see Giles warming up, we could see Cody Ashy start at third base. He said that the other day. He took ground balls at third base a couple days ago. Pete said the option was for him to do that, so if he had to do a double switch, since he's limited with third baseman, he could put Cody there. Uh, but to get him at bats and to get Blanco off his feet, he said he could use him as a uh, third baseman. They don't want to do it that often because they don't want him to get left field out of his head. But there is that thought that, it, that Cody could come uh, come back and play a little third base for the Phils. There's a line drive caught by Justin Bohr at first. 
Freddie got it on a good spot in the back. Or was settling back on that one away. It's a nice job of hitting. Slider down and in, and big man showing a little bit of ups. Good timing. But make sure he bends the knees next time. Make sure that looks like you're getting up a lot higher than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking like a true big man. Cameron Homer the opposite way his first his last time up. Grounded out his first time up intentionally walked. Back of the fourth. Big hop for Prado. And there are two outs. Next Sunday is ShopRite back to school lunch bag. Free to fans 14 and under. A summer weekend of baseball versus the Padres, the 28th through the 30th. Get your tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Well, here is Odubel. Interesting move, sorry, Tom. I thought they might use Cody Ashley to pinch hit. Cody hasn't seen a whole lot of playing time in this series. See if he can get his timing back down for the Mets series. Yeah, because you would think he is going to see some time in the Mets series since there are four right handers. I mean, three right handers. I'm sorry. Nice is pitching game four. I keep forgetting that Harvey uh, was skipped today. Yeah. And that changed the rotation for the Mets. 0 and 1 to Odubel Herrera. 0 and 2 to Odubel. He's had a pretty good streak going against uh, Dan Jennings' team. So it's in one of the last seven games. That's why the season series, the Phillies are two games up, seven to five. One ball and two strikes. Inside, two and two. The Phillies will be back here in September. I wonder if that means the roof will be open. Last year it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No. And a line drive base, base it <laughs> right past the feet of the second base umpire, and Odubel's aboard. I wonder what Angel Hernandez is going to say to him over at first base. Well, Will Little was able to jump out of the way of that. So a two-out pinch hit single. This is a missile slider down and in. Ah, where do I go? It may have gotten him a little bit. No. no? Cesar hitless in three of bats. He walked once and scored a run. Should get a pretty good pitch to hit right here. 
Be interested to see if Herrera is on the move. 2 1. Fastball situation. Fouled away. Herrera was not going on that pitch. So now two balls, two strikes. Bill scored a run in the third, one in the seventh inning. They lead it 2 nothing. Eight shutout innings for Aaron Nola. Now Herrera will be off and running three and two with two outs. Jeff Mathis reminds everybody of it. Boar is holding on Herrera must not think Cesar can turn on the fastball right here. There he goes. And a strike three called on the outside part of the plate. Second time today that Cesar has been struck out. No runs, one hit, and one man left. Ken Giles is ready to go to try to save this one for the Phils. Well, it's Ken Giles time here as we head to the bottom of the ninth. Phils with a 2 nothing lead in Miami. When this one is said and done, the Phils will board the plane and head home to get a four-game series against the New York Mets. Here's your pitching matchups for that series on uh, Monday at 7.05. Adam Morgan and Jacob DeGrom. And then the righty Jerome Williams on Tuesday versus Noah Syndergaard. Bartolo Colon will take the ball for the Mets on Wednesday opposite Gerard Eikhoff. And Aaron Harang on Thursday at 7.05. Versus the left hander down at the knees. It's 2 0 here, guys. So I will caution you this one's not over yet. All right, Murph. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. We always need that insight. Ken Giles in his 56th game will face D. Gordon. Saw Dubal Herrera come on. He's in center field. D. Gordon, one for three. He's flied out. He's grounded out. And he's singled. Seven free and easy. 97 paint low and away. Got him. Rupp will pick it up and then has to fire in time. One out. Three pitches and our first out is recorded here in the ninth inning. It's a good slider. I'm always amazed how quick catchers can jump on. You know, baseballs at the dirt. They can go left or right. They know which way they're going. They don't panic. Camera got back there very quickly, and 
had tons of time to throw uh, D. Gordon out. So Gordon peek over his shoulder to see where Rupp was because he was trying to get an angle to maybe block uh, his view of the first base bag. Okay, Giles nine for nine in save situations since taking over as the Phillies closer. And it's two and zero. Oh. Possibly ball three. In the last 12 games since he took over as the closer, his earned run average is 0 0.71. Live ball center field. Oduble. Stay tuned after the ball game. Marlon Anderson will be along to break it down. Uh, Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Marlon and Marshall are standing by. One out of way before we get to the post game. Off his hands out towards shallow left center field Galvis is out there over the shoulder grab did he hang on he did what a play by Freddie Galvis to wrap up this four game series the Phillies have taken three of four from the Marlins they win it today two to nothing it's a three hit combined shutout between Aaron Nola 